Hi everyone, my name is Maddie. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video where I'm going to be recommending you books based on my favourite songs. So for anyone who doesn't know, I am obsessed with music. I listen to music every single day, every chance I get. I just love music. I grew up playing music, although that was much more classical and musical theatre. And I grew up with that and I just, music is my favourite thing. I can't imagine a world where I don't listen to music every single day. And so I have a lot of favourite songs and favourite artists. I'm not even going to try and run through them all now because I will miss a hundred and I will be sad about it. But basically I have a playlist on Spotify, which I do apologise I'm not going to link, called Favourites. And it just has all my favourite songs in it. And I will have some artists who I would consider like my favourite artists of all time and none of their songs will make that playlist. This is just like individual songs I love so much. A lot of them are from my favourite artists, obviously that kind of tracks, doesn't it? But I have probably 50 to 60 songs in this playlist, maybe more, maybe less, I don't actually know. When I first made it, I had about 40, but I've added to it whenever I find a new song I really like. And there are some full albums on there, which I'm going to skip if they come up today but it was just a case if I had like something that I was going to and I needed a really long playlist so I just whacked in some full albums and I've not got around to taking them out yet because I'm now kind of used to them being there and having those songs in there when I listen to it but I do need to take them out. But anyway the plan for today is I'm going to shuffle this playlist and I am going to recommend you a book based on which song comes up. I don't know how this is going to go but we're going to give it a good try I obviously cannot play you the songs in this video because copyright, but I will list them all down below. So if you want to look any of them up, please feel free. I feel like this first page gives you a really good overview of the kind of music I like. I will say I like a huge variety of music. I love musical theatre, I love pop punk, I like rock, I like just general pop, I love K-pop. So many different things, though I will say it probably centres around pop as a general focal point. But my only rule is that if I can sing along to it, i.e. I can pick out a strong melody, I probably like it. So the only two genres I listen to much less or like would never choose to listen to myself are screamo and like hard rap. Some rap is really clever and I appreciate like the stories it tells. I can't sing along to it, it frustrates me and therefore I don't really choose to listen to it. I love really strong melodies and although the beats and the intricacies of rap are really cool, just not my kind of thing. So just to give you a very quick overview of like my top ever songs, which is what the top of this playlist is, we have Water Fountain by Alec Benjamin. I'll put album art up here. This is Gospel by Panic at the Disco. Graveyard by Halsey. Microcosmos by BTS. Who by Lauv, which has BTS in it and probably isn't actually my favourite Lauv song, but I do really like it. Monster by Dodie and Superhero by Lauv, which is my favourite Lauv song actually. So anyway, very brief overview. That kind of ticks off a lot of my favourite artists. I can't guarantee that every single of my favourite artists is even in this playlist. This is very much individual songs that I love. And that can be the only song from the artist I've ever listened to. It could be one of like me knowing their whole back catalogue and it's just the one I really love. It can be anything. So yeah, and there's definitely artists that are in here a lot of times, like Lauv and Dodie and people like that. They're in here a lot. Um, C reads in here a lot. Unsurprisingly, there's a decent bit of BTS in here because I really like BTS. There's a big variety, but I'm going to hit shuffle. We're going to see what song comes up. I've got the sound off on my phone so it doesn't play by accident because it's on my desktop and it would be loud. And I'm going to recommend you books. I'm doing this completely on the fly, so I may not have the books in my flat. I'm out to put pictures up. I may not have any ideas at all. Also, I make no promises for there being actual decent correlation between these songs and these books it's gonna be on a vibe. I'm gonna be like, you know what? This gives me this, this vibe, this book. We're gonna go for it and see what happens. Also, I highly doubt you can hear it, but if you can hear like church bells in the background, I'm guessing someone is getting married at the church near me. Cause I can hear church bells quite loudly, but I doubt it's picking up on the camera. Anyway, let's get on with this. We're gonna hit shuffle. I may as well show you actually. We'll see what song comes up first. Oh, it's playing at the bottom. It's not playing at all. Spotify's broken. <laughs> Okay, it was playing through my desktop, so that didn't work, and I would redo it, but I really love the song that came up, and it is, I'll put the album on the screen. It is Little Miss Perfect, sung by Taylor Louderman, written by, I can't remember the name, but basically there was like a 
backstory is really cool. <laughs> there was a writing contest for musical theatre songs called Write Out Loud. This is the song that won, so it was recorded professionally. And it is phenomenal. If anyone loves musical theatre songs, listen to this song. Basic premise of this song, it kind of has a story because it's musical theatre, is this girl who's like best at everything, looks like a really good life, her parents are great, she's head of the student council, and she's definitely straight. Definitely straight. Except no, she's definitely not. It's great, it's so good. Um, it's adorable, and I do have a recommendation for this one. I'm also having a moment of realisation that so many of the songs on this playlist feel very queer to me, whether they are or aren't, so we're gonna be getting a lot of queer recs in this video, as normal. First one though, for Little Miss Perfect, sung by Taylor Loudman, we have Hot Dog Girl by Jennifer Duggan. This isn't completely the same, I seem to remember the main character in this book, not that I can even remember their name, Lou isn't necessarily like top of everything, perfect life, that kind of thing. She's actually kind of the opposite. Like she plays the hot dog at the fair, but this is very much a story of her like coming to terms with her sexuality and realizing her sexuality. So I feel like it's quite appropriate. She goes the whole way through the book being like, I'm in love with this guy, I'm in love with this guy, I need to get this guy. And the premise is she fake dates her best friend, a girl to make him jealous. And yeah, she ain't straight is the result of this book. Don't feel like that's a spoiler. It's Jennifer Duggan. All the characters are by Jennifer Duggan books and it's brilliant. So this is a really good book. I will say, because I've heard a lot of people criticize it for this reason, it's actually the reason I love this book. The main character is a bit of a piece of shit. She treats her best friend really badly. She kind of manipulates her best friend. Like there was some really not great stuff happening, but that's kind of the point. Like she's a teenager, she's screwing up. And then like she gets her shit together and realizes and does better. So it's kind of the whole point. So if you don't like that, maybe don't read it. But if you love a slightly awful character who learns and grows, you will probably enjoy this book. So this is my first recommendation. And I love Jennifer Duggan. And her new book comes out in like a month and I'm going to die. Okay, let's see what song comes up next. Oh, it's queer again and my sound's back on. The Good Side by Troy Sivan. Okay, ooh, I need to have a think. Kind of context for this song again. I will list them all down below so you can go listen to them. But this is about a breakup where he gets like the good end of the bargain and kind of feels bad about it, I think, from what I've read. I've never like looked into the lyrics. From what I've read? From what I've heard, I guess? I don't wanna look into lyrics, I just know them all because I sing along a lot and then take my own meaning from it. So that's what I've taken from this song. Let's see if I can find a wreck for you. Okay, it's niggling at the back of my head that like there's a book I've read that has two male main characters who used to be together and now aren't, but they're still like best friends, but it's kind of bittersweet, but I can't remember what it is. So we're going with a slightly rogue recommendation, which is Take a Hint, Danny Brown. In this book, Danny, our main character, has recently gone through a breakup with a woman and without spoiling it, but throughout this book, there's like a lot of resolution to do with that. And I feel like it was a really nice aspect of this book. Is it the central focus of the book? No, but I feel like it was a really beautiful moment, like getting that closure and like moving through things like that. So I just enjoyed, I was gonna say the breakup rep, that is so not what I mean, but it is also kind of what I mean. I just enjoyed how it was depicted in this book. I thought it was done really, really nicely. I really enjoyed it. It was an interesting aspect to include in a book like this and Danny is by. So again, we are going on the LGBT train with these wrecks. Honestly, won't be surprised if that happens the whole way through. Okay. Next song, let's see what we get. Ooh, Panic at the Disco, High Hopes. Okay, we need like a book with a lot of ambition, being really determined, knowing you can make it. I think I can find something for this. Okay, again, potentially a slightly rogue recommendation, but I think it fits. I'm going with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I realize I'm recommending pretty popular books so far. I'm literally just trying to find something that fits the song and these are books I love, so you know. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo follows Evelyn Hugo, who is basically just determined to make it by any means. This definitely has a slightly darker take to it than the song High Hopes, which is more just believing in yourself and like working to your goals. But I do still think this is kind of a similar vibe. She is just bloody determined. She's going to get where she wants to. She knows how to get there and she will do everything in her power to make it happen. And she is not letting anyone tell her otherwise at any point. Fantastic book, I love it. Again, we have a bi main character. Yeah, she's bi. Why did I suddenly question that? Literally a lie in the book about it. But she is bi, it's a fantastic book. I love it a lot. It is historical, which I don't normally enjoy, but if you don't like historical, still give this a go because it's brilliant. Okay, up next we have 
What is that? Is that, do you ever buy feel good? Interesting. Interesting. So this is, do you ever buy feel good? Kind of key line of it is like, do you ever, do you ever want to run away? Um, like kind of running away together kind of vibes. I, okay, we have another rogue one. I'm gonna go grab it. Okay, so the book I've got for this one, I wouldn't say matches the vibe of the song, but just that kind of feeling of running away, I feel like matches this book very well. And that is Black Wings Beating by Alex London. This is a YA fantasy. It is again LGBT, fantastic. We're keeping on that trend. And I obviously can't tell you too much because it's like plot related, but there is definitely a lot of talk of running away in a lot of instances in this book. And I feel like it's also got quite a good feel of like facing up to things versus running from them and kind of deciding where you should lie on that boundary. Is that what the song is about? No, not really. It's about like two people wanting to run away together because they're in love, I think, but different vibe, not the same reasons, but I feel like it's, I'm gonna, I said these wouldn't be logical connections. It's just what my brain does. So Black Wings Beating by Alex London. This is a really good YA fantasy series. I've only read the first book so far, but it's phenomenal. And it follows a world where like an affinity to birds is really important and falconry gives you status. And these brother and sister duo twins have to go on a bit of a quest to get a mythical scary bird to pay off some debt. It's really, really good. I would recommend it. I feel like these are just progressively going to get more and more rogue, but we're gonna keep going and see where we end up. So next, oh, we've got some BTS, which one is it? My Time, oh my god, right. So this is a song by Jungkook of BTS. It is a solo song. This is a phenomenal song about growing up and like how he feels he's wasted. or well, not wasted, but not necessarily got to live his life in the way he wanted um, up to the age of 24 because he's just lived in the limelight since he was 15 and kind of had his life very limited. And um, there's a lot of like talking, like the way he's performed it and stuff of how he was sexualized really young and just like lost his childhood kind of. And now he's taking it back and living his own life. I am sure I have something that can fit this. Actually, yes, I do have something that can fit this. It is unfortunately not out yet. And again, it's not the central plot of the book, but One Last Stop by Casey McQuiston. I won't say too much because spoilers, uh, it does come out in June for anyone that wants to read it. This has a really strong undertone of this kind of thing. I won't say too much why, but August feels like her childhood was kind of taken from her by her mother because of certain events that happen. Again, read it and find out what, I don't want to spoil anyone, but it definitely has that strong feeling of her moving to New York to reclaim her life and do things the way she wants to and no longer being tied to that life she had previously. So I think that fits really well. This is a really fun new adult contemporary following August who moves to New York. She's a massive pessimist, doesn't believe in love, all of this. And then she moves to New York and finds this group of friends who she lives with and it's massive found family vibes. And then she meets a girl on the train and maybe she does believe in love. It's adorable, it's great, I loved it. Highly recommend. And it's queer, of course. Okay, let's see what is next. Ooh, Almost Lover by a Fine Frenzy. This has been one of my favorite songs since I was like 14. Oh, this is all about like missed romance. It's yeah, the chorus is goodbye my almost lover, goodbye my hopeless friend. I'm trying not to think about, can't you just let me be? Like those lyrics are probably slightly off, but that's the vibe. It's very much a like missed romance. Ooh, let me think. Okay, we've got one. Perfect on Paper by Sophie Gonzalez. This is a way a contemporary I read recently and really enjoyed. And I won't obviously tell you how it resolves, but within this book there is definitely that missed romance moment and it's a big part of the book and oh my god it broke me i was reading and i was like yelling at these characters like get yourselves together you like each other you idiots and they were just like kept missing it and kept not chatting to each other and kept just so nearly getting their shit together and then not doing it it was very frustrating bit of a plot for this book for anyone who wants to read it because it is really really good this follows darcy who runs almost like an agony aunt kind of column for kids in their school. And she's run this anonymously for years. And basically someone finds out that she runs it. And it's this guy, Broham, and he offers to pay her quite a lot of money to help him get his ex-girlfriend back. Darcy's in love with her best friend. He's trying to get someone back. Bets on who ends up together, it, good luck with it. It's adorable, Darcy's by her best friend's um, lesbian, lots of queer up all the way throughout this book in lots of different ways. Generally fantastic, love it a lot. 
Okay, we've done six. I think we're gonna go for at least 10, but then I may just keep going. We'll see how it's going at that point. What's next? Ooh, we've got some Alec Benjamin. Must have been the wind. Oh my God, I love this song so much. This, ooh, no, right. I'll give you context and then I'll go and think of a book. Um, this is all about basically domestic abuse and like supporting people. So the premise of this song is that I guess Alec um, hears his upstairs neighbour being very violent to his wife, girlfriend, whatever. And he goes to kind of check she's okay. And she's just like, I don't know what you heard. It must've been the wind, like nothing's happening. And so he just like finds a way to be like, okay, you tell me when you're ready, but I'm here to support you anyway. And it's, oh my God, it's heartbreaking, but adorable, love it. Let me go and try and find a book for this. Okay, I've chosen a book. This book doesn't actually feature domestic abuse in it or kind of really abuse of any kind, but I still think it links and I'll tell you why. And that is Camp by Elsie Rosen. The reason I have chosen this book is because it very much has that vibe of waiting for someone to come to you for the support they need. And like, you can try and help as much as you want, but until they're ready to accept that help, it's probably not gonna do much. And that's a massive vibe in this book. The main character in this book is acting appallingly, quite frankly. And his friends really try and help him and put him on the right path. And he doesn't listen, won't have a bar of it. And they quietly support him in a really solid way and wait for him to realize he needs their help. And then they help him. And it's really beautifully done. I love this book a lot. Premise, this follows, what is the main character's name? Randy, who goes to camp every summer and it's like an LGBT summer camp. And normally when he's there, he does musical theater program, loves musical theater, all his friends love musical theater, but he is in love with a jock at this camp. And so he completely redesigns himself to fit the more like mask stereotype, which is what this guy tends to like and signs up for all the sports programs, kind of a madness his friend, is fully manipulating this guy because they've known each other for years and he pretends to be a completely different person. This guy has no idea that it's Randy, thinks he's meeting a new person. It's really awkward, it's quite a lot of emotional manipulation, but it deals with so many cool things about LGBT culture and also about how you shouldn't obviously change yourself to like someone and also a lot of internalized homophobia and like, how some people can be really comfortable in their sexuality, but then still not comfortable in like masculinity, things like that. Fascinating, brilliant, loved it. I now want to reread it having just sold myself on this book again. Okay, up next we have, ooh, is that Goodbye Forever by Us the Duo? Ooh, okay. I'm gonna need to find a book with a badass main character. So this is, <laughs> Um, a girl breaking up with a guy because I think he's got with someone else or like they've already broken up and he's with someone else. And it's just her being like, yeah, you're cool. Yeah, you're cute. Yeah, she's great. I'm better. So like, bye, because I don't want anything to do with you because I'm better than all of this. I can definitely find a book with a badass main character like that, I'm sure. Okay, so I was thinking about the chorus a little bit more and I've definitely chosen a book that I feel like fits because the chorus is very much like, it's hard to say goodbye when you're so beautiful, but I need to get out of this, I'm better than this. And that is exactly fits this. I'm not gonna say how because spoilers, um, but as far as you'll take me by Phil Stamper, this is another fantastic YA contemporary. Lots of YA contemporary coming out because a lot of songs are kind of about romance. So, you know, we're doing lots of YA contemporary recs today. I'll see if I can fit in a couple more fantasies before finishing the video though. And this is a fantastic story about Marty who has very much grown up in small town America and is gay and is definitely not gonna be accepted if he comes out. So his plan is to just move to London um, at like age 18. He claims to have got into a summer program for music. He plays the oboe and um, he hasn't. So he just goes anyway and tries to figure things out. And there is a relationship in this book and I feel the vibes from this song. Really good book, really, really fun time this one. Okay, let's see what comes up next. Okay, we've already done BTS, so we're gonna go again. It is, oh, it's Lauv, is this Who? Oh, okay, Who by Lauv. I need to think about this one. Okay, I thought of something. So take this with a pinch of salt because it sounds really bad. Again, I'm just kind of going off a vibe, I'll explain it. So the so book I'm going with for this is Between Perfect and Real by Ray Steve. I'll put the cover up here. And this song is all about kind of losing sight of the person you've fallen in love with. Like, who are you? You're not the person I thought you were. That's the kind of vibe of the song. So in this book, it follows 
what is the main character's name? Dean? Dean? Dean. Um, I have to check that. So it follows Dean who is trans and no one knows. They are coming to terms with it throughout the book. And the main person who doesn't know who they're very concerned about telling is their girlfriend who believes them to be a lesbian. Um, slight issue there, they're trans, they are male, so that doesn't really work. But anyway, that's the plot of the book. So obviously they're like, who are you? Not like a saying, someone's trans, you're not the person I fell in love with, like hell to the no. Obviously that's not what I'm going for here. But that is the perspective a character in this book takes. Really bad perspective, but it is a perspective that comes up. And also the main character also has this thoughts about someone else in the book. Um, about kind of their girlfriend and being like, who are you? This isn't who I thought you would be. This is not what I thought you'd be like. So it's a vibe that happens throughout the book. Really good book, by the way. Um, as I already mentioned, like briefly, it's a plot about Dean coming to terms with being trans and then coming out. And the reason this really comes to the forefront throughout this book is they're cast as Romeo in their school play. And it really makes them like assess their gender and how they're feeling. It's really good, really interesting. I really enjoyed it, especially with all the theater vibes. Okay, so I think that's nine. We'll definitely do one more and then we'll see. Let's see what's up next. Oh, we've already done BTS. I have too much BTS on this playlist. Oh, Seagreed. We like Seagreed. Strangers. Ooh, let me think about what this song means and then we'll find a book. Okay, so this wasn't necessarily my favorite book, but it fit too well, I had to. So Strangers, it's like, I think it's more about like an unrequited love, like Strangers, that can never be us. We're not gonna fall in love with like that. But I'm just going off the title and recommending Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. So for anyone who doesn't know, the plot of this book is that Grace, our main character, goes to Vegas to celebrate finishing her PhD, gets drunk and marries a random woman she's no idea who, literally has to find out later who it is. Definitely fits the vibe of Strangers. And then it's like a romance and it's also just like a kind of hard hitting contemporary about women in academia, especially black women in academia, how they're treated, all of that. Interesting book. Wasn't my favourite, mainly because I expected it to be more of a romance and it was not so much of a romance, it's just like a hard hitting contemporary, but it was good fun, um, so I would still recommend it. Okay, we're gonna do a couple more just because I'm having so much fun. Um, so we've got Strangers, let's see. Oh, no, not more Seagreed, something different. We've done Panic. Why do I only listen to one artist? Oh my God, what is going on? Oh my God, can we have a different artist? There we go, that's different. Don't Wanna Let You Down by Johnny Glenn. Literally, you can see how much this place is just populated by the same few artists. So Don't Wanna Let You Down, I'm actually gonna listen to because I can't remember the lyrics off the top of my head. I came across this song because Steph uses it for her B-roll in her vlogs, like Steph from Steph Loves. And I love it. <laughs> so I've tracked it down, the song, by Googling the lyrics and I'm obsessed with it. I'm gonna listen and listen to the lyrics and then find a book. Okay, I'm gonna do two recommendations for this song because one is an extremely popular book and I feel like everyone's already read it and another is very underrated by an author I've already spoken about. So I feel like by doing two, I kind of cancel out the fact that these aren't that original. The first one is Verona Comics by Jennifer Duggan. Yes, I've already spoken about Jennifer Duggan in this video. I like her books a lot. Um, and the reason this one I think fits really well, because it's I don't want to let you down, like even when you walk away, I want you to stay, I'm just gonna do everything for you, even if we can't afford it, like we're gonna make it work. Massive vibes of relationship in this book. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal book. I loved it so much, one of my favourites of last year. And it follows these two main characters, and I can't even remember their names, Jubilee and Ridley. And it's, as you can kind of tell, of a Rona, like Romeo and Juliet retelling. And it follows these two who are both children of people who own comic book stores. Jubilee's mums, I think, own a like really niche comic book store, like an independent, and Ridley's dad owns like the biggest chain of comic book stores in the country. And the parents are very much at war with each other and these two end up together. And what I love about this and where I think it fits really well is it is a hugely codependent relationship and it's a really unhealthy codependent relationship. And I love so much that was shown in this book. Oh my God, it was just beautiful to read and just meant a lot to me. And I feel like that vibe of like, I won't let you down, whatever happens, honestly just slightly matches the codependent relationship in this book. And then the other one I recommend, I don't actually have with me is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I don't know what it is about the vibe of this song, but it really, reads like the climax of the book. Like listening to that song, I can picture the climax of Cemetery Boys happening. Just 
the way that the main two characters, Yadriel and Juvian, support each other and refuse to let each other down and really like go out to bat for one another. I think it just matches really well. I don't know, the energy just, it just gives me the right vibe. Okay, we're gonna do one more and then I'm gonna wrap up. Final one, let's see what we are trying to match. Ooh, Monster by Dodie. This is, I was gonna say, this is one of my favorite songs of all time. Hell yeah, it is, it's on this playlist, but this is literally like top, top, one of my absolute faves. Um, I'm gonna slightly twist this one. So what this song is about is it's about someone like thinking that their partner is now seeing them as a monster and just starting to see them that way. I'm gonna go with a slightly different take and just kind of take the title because I have a book that works for this. Okay, so I'm going with The Wicker King by Kay Ankrum. This is like a YA, slightly thrillery kind of book. Um, again, LGBT, has male male rep in it. And it's really, really good. I really enjoyed this. It's absolutely mind bending in a really good way. And there is definite, relevance to like the title monsters in this um basically it follows a guy who starts hallucinating and his partner friend i don't even know actually where it is at the beginning of the book is thinks the best way to help him is to kind of go along with it and let him believe this sort of stuff um it's, it's interesting it's an interesting one for sure quite dark but very good um i think this works for monster in my mind Okay, so after going through quite a lot of my favorite songs, I don't actually know how many, I didn't keep track. We have this big stack of recommendations for all of you. There are two others as well, obviously One Last Stop and Between Perfect and Real, which I don't own because I read them as eARCs. And yeah, those, those are all my recommendations. I'm not sure this video worked well, but we're going with it. I love music. If anyone has any music recommendations for me based off like the things you've seen in this video that's music I like, please let me know. I'm always looking for more music. Um, there are so many other songs as well, which I didn't get to do in this one. So I am definitely down for doing a part two of this, if it's something you would like to see. I realize this is a lot of YA contemporary and a couple adult contemporaries, but literally only like one fantasy in the whole stack. I do apologize for that. It's just a case of a lot of stories are kind of about love and relationships, which is more prominent in contemporary for sure. Certainly as I haven't read that many LGBT fantasies, I'm trying to find more and I'm trying to read as many as I can, but I haven't, you know, read that many, and so less to pick from. But this is what we've got, and I had really good fun doing this, actually. I've had a whale of a time. I really enjoyed that, um, so I hope you enjoyed it too. Let me know if you have any kind of recommendations, or actually, down below, drop your favourite song and a book you associate with it. It can be as loose an association as most of these are, it can be the title, it can be the lyrics, it can be a general vibe. Just let me know. I'm very, very intrigued to see what you will pick. But that is it for the video. So if you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up. Comment down below, as I've already said. Subscribe if you'd like to see more content from me. There are links down below to all of my other social medias, as well as my book clubs and read-longs that I host, the readathon I'm hosting in June, and my wishlist and my Patreon. That is getting way too long a sentence to say at this point. But if you want to check out any of those, that's where you find them. There will also be a list of all of the songs that I spoke about and all of these books for you. That's it for the video, so bye, and I'll see you in the next one.